Spectrum News One presents a special collaboration with the University of Southern California. In our first story, we meet Los Angeles-based mural artist Michael Che Romero. He tried his hand at football and business, but eventually found his way to his true passion, art. Only his canvas happens to be on the side of buildings. For me, it is public spaces. Being a muralist, people can see your murals, your art, 24-7. There's no gallery. There's no hours. It's all free. You're connecting humanity and the arts and bringing everything together and inspiring people and uplifting people. And that's what mural arts does. The challenge of a wall this big is getting as much paint on the wall as fast as possible. That's the most important thing. We got 6,000 square feet. That's a lot. If you can imagine me rolling this. That's why painting murals is so fun and exciting. It's because every single project is completely different. So, you know, it's not like an office job going to the office, sitting down, doing the same thing. Everything's, it's, every project's different and has its challenges. Get a nice cover. My goal is to paint the entire world, to paint every empty space and inspire it and uplift it through color, symmetry, and composition. This is called the Cameo mural. It's a, a triptych, three-piece, 2,000 square feet for each facade, three facades, so a total of 6,000 square feet. We are on eight stories of scaffolding, which is a record for me. You gotta be versatile as a mural painter, and you know, I gotta be honest with you, this is what Da Vinci and Michelangelo and Raphael and, and all the greats were on. We built a uh, pulley system, which helps pulling up paint and equipment and everything, because you don't want to carry anything up the ladder. The first two days were very hard. I mean, it's exhausting, but your body adapts. My ethos as an artist is to uplift and inspire and unite communities and transform spaces. And uniting and invigorating and creating energy through lines and composition and color. That makes me feel good. And if I can inspire somebody that looks at it and they have an epiphany and it energizes them and, and makes them more creative, I did my job. When I look at a piece and it, I get goosebumps, that is like, man, that's a beautiful thing. That's art that resonates within your soul. It makes you feel good. You feel something, you feel emotion, you feel a connection. That's what being an artist does. Like you, through a visual means, 
you can connect people on a deeper wavelength. I think Michael would have been content just like churning out small things, doing whatever, just to get heard. And I'm like, listen, it's more than that. And you can be more than that. That's the narrative, right? The starving artist is a narrative that I think every artist believes. And they're not taught to be entrepreneurs. They're not taught to be marketing geniuses. They're not taught to believe that that's part of it. In art school, we weren't taught the hustle of being an artist. You have to do more than usual. You update your website, you do your social media. The reality is, is if, if you don't market yourself, nobody's gonna know who you are and you're not gonna sell. SEMA really made me look at who I was and made me understand my value. I was a member at Lions Gym, which was in Culver City. I was like, you know, Michael's a uh, artist and I think he just needs to get his first start. He's also an athlete. It'd be kind of cool to do the CrossFit gyms. It was like really, really well received. They actually put it on jackets and stuff like that. I was getting phone calls from other gym members because it's a small community, the CrossFit community. They wanted artwork in their gyms. So I started doing gyms. And then I realized that this is a business. I can turn this into a business. I pitched this idea where I can create and curate a whole mural gallery. I just need wall space. I reached out to artists. I did a call to action in Los Angeles. I got 10 artists. Everybody designed something. We got approval from the owner, and then we began painting this. We turned these empty space in kind of a mural gallery. Two thousand thirteen, I lost my daughter Valentina to a street racing crash. When they gave me the rainbow halo, I said. I want them to know that it was just not anybody that died here. It was my daughter. This was a human being that shouldn't have died. Lily reached out to me on a whim, and she wanted me to work with her on a project. She wanted to do a memorial light post. I said, you know what? I, I, I want this to stay here forever. You know, I want something for her. Hearing her story really touched me and I wanted to help her out. So we decided to do this community service project and donate our time, our paint, and our talent to do this memorial light post mural for uh, Valentina. The pole that she goes to now all the time because she feels like it's not a place of sadness anymore. It's a place where she can feel safe and loved and close to her daughter. Hearing Lily tell me that she goes and visits this place almost every day, it touched me. And that, and that is that connection with community and what art can do. I quit a small job that I had to follow this dream, and it's finally turned into a career. I want to share my story with people. I want to let them know that being a professional artist and a successful artist is possible. Yes, you'll be beat down. Yes, you'll, the people will say no, but you just got to get back up every single day and keep fighting and never give up. That's what it's about.